Flow Accelerated Math 6-7 students. Um, we are working in Module 7, and this is Lesson 5. And Lesson 5 is called Ratio of Fractions and the Unit Rate. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Ratio of their fractions, ratio of fractions and their unit rate. Sorry. Um, the goal for today, today we will focus on finding unit rates from fractions. The question that I want you to be thinking about is how do you find the unit rate when the x value and the y value are both fractions? So we have been working about uh, or working with unit rates. We know that unit rates are the constant rate of change. And in order to understand and know constant rate of change, um, we have to figure out what it is per one. Um, and the other thing that we need to remember is that the constant rate of change is what we multiply any x value by in order to get the y value. So you have to remember the y value depends on the x value being multiplied by the constant rate of change. And the rate of change and the constant and the unit rate are all the same thing. They all have the same um, meaning. Their names are different, but they all have the same meaning. Um, the question that I want you to think about today is how do you find the unit rate when the x value and the y value are both fractions? I said that already. So we're focusing on how do you find unit rate when you have fractions? So the first thing that I want you to do is we're going to go through a little bit of things to remember because it's been a while since we talked about this. But the first problem that I want you to look at is one half divided by three-fourths. And what I want you to think about is if you can visualize this, we have one half of a sandwich, okay? And we're supposed to divide that in between three-fourths sections. So the question is, how many three-fourths fit in one half? So there is a very easy way to um, get going with this, if you remember back to sixth grade, is we need to convert so that both fractions have the same denominator. And so the denominator that I would suggest that fits between these two is let's go with fourths. Okay, so now we remember this process of saying, okay, how did I get from two to four? I multiplied by two. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So this is really two fourths. And then this one is already fourths. So how did I get from four to four times one? What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So that would be three fourths. So now the question is, how many three fourths? Okay, I'm going to write that down for you. How many three fourths? fit into two fourths. Okay, that's the question you're thinking about with this. And so the way that we do it is we just, now that we have a common denominator, we can divide straight across. So if we have two fourths divided by three fourths, then we just divide straight across because our, we have a common denominator. So four divided by four is one, and then two divided by three is two divided by three, which is two thirds. So we know that two-thirds of three-fourths fit into one-half. And this is our unit rate, because a unit rate means, remember what a unit rate means, a unit rate means an amount, okay, per one. So do you see the one right there? Unit rate means an amount per one. So do we have an amount per one? We do. So the answer would be two-thirds. Okay, so the unit rate for this problem would be two-thirds. Okay, so now let's try the next one. We have three-fourths divided by one-sixth. So again, we're remembering that really handy rule of finding a common denominator that both numbers share. And I like to go with the smallest one that they share because that makes my life mathematically a lot easier. So I know that 4 and 6 both share 12, so I'm going to say 12 is my common denominator. So the question is, how did I get from 4 to 12? Well, I'm going to multiply this by 3, so what you do to one side, you have to do to the other, so 3 times 3 is 9. Now I'm asking myself, how did I get from 6 to 12? Well, I know that I multiplied it by 2, so what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. 1 times 2 is 2. And then the question that we have to think about is, 
how many 2 twelfths fit into 9 twelfths? Okay, that's the question that we're thinking about. All right, so that's very easy. We take 9 twelfths and we divide it by 2 twelfths. And all we have to do is divide straight across. So we say, okay, 12 divided by 12 is 1. 9 divided by 2 is 9 halves. Okay. We also, if we want to take it further to see it more, we know that 9 halves is really 4 and a half. So we know that 4 and a half, 2 twelfths fit in 9 twelfths. Okay. And again, this right here is our unit rate because a unit rate is an amount per 1. And so we know that 9 twelfths is the amount per 1. So we found the unit rate. All right. So now let's do the last one. It says 5 sevenths divided by 1 half. Okay. Again, we're finding a common denominator between the two denominators that we have. 7 and 2. So the easiest one that I can think of or see is 14. How did I get it from 7 to 14? I multiplied by 2. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So 5 times 2 is 10. How did I get from 2 to 14? I multiplied by 7. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So you get 7. And now we get to divide straight across. 14 divided by 14 is 1. 10 divided by 7 is 10 7. So how many 7 14 fit? into 10 14. <coughs> this is the question you're thinking about. And so 10 divided by 7 is 1 with 3 left over. So we know that 1 and 3 7 fit into 10 14. Okay? So I'm hoping that this jogs your memory and that you remember that this is what we have to um, do in order to get to our unit rate. So if you find the common denominator, that creates your per one that you're looking for, and then you have your unit rate automatically. Okay, so now let's go to the try this really quickly, because I am going to leave one for you to try by yourself. Um, so the try this, it says a turtle walks seven-eighths of a mile in 50 minutes. What is the turtle speed in miles per hour? Okay, so I underlined that because you'll notice that they changed your units of measure. And so we need to talk about that really quickly. What we know right now is the turtle walks 7, 8. Oh, we're comparing. What are we comparing first? We're comparing miles. Remember how I told you to write down your rates first? Miles per minute. That's what we're comparing first. So it no, so now that, that what the story says is that the turtle can um, walk 7, 8 per 50 minutes. I'm sorry, I didn't write that big enough. So these are miles and these are minutes. Okay, so 7 eighths of a mile in 50 minutes is what this says. And what the um, question is asking us to do is it's asking us to tell what the turtle speed would be in miles per hour. Okay, so we know that one um, <clears throat> minute equals 60 seconds, or 60 seconds, which that's regardless, we don't need that. One hour is 60 minutes, and we know that a turtle can go 7 eighths of a mile in 50 minutes. So how many miles can they go in one hour? We know that one hour is equal to 60 minutes, and so our job is we've got to figure out how far the turtle travels in 60 minutes. Well, right now, we know how far they travel in 50 minutes. So what I would do is I would want to find how far does the turtle travel in one minute, because then I can take whatever that is, and I can multiply it by 60, because 60 minutes makes an hour, and then that would tell us what we got for one hour. Okay, so how do we get from 50 to 1? We're going to divide by 50. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And so we're going to divide this by 50. Okay, so 50 divided by 50 gives me 1. And now we have a fraction, 7 8, and we're supposed to divide it by 50. Okay, so we put 50 over 1. Now we have to find a common denominator. So we're going to say the common denominator is 8. 
So how did we get from 8 to 8? We multiplied by 1, like you do to one side, you have to do to the other, so that's 7 eighths. And how did we get from 1 to 8? We multiplied by 8, like you do to one side, you have to do to the other, so this would be 400. Okay, so now that gives us in one minute, remember we're working in minutes, don't get confused, in one minute, the turtle can walk seven four hundredths of a mile. So this is that's a very tiny amount, seven four hundredths of a mile. But the reason that we need to know that is because that's how far he travels in one minute. So we want to find out how far he travels in 60 minutes. So our unit rate is seven four hundredths of a mile. Remember, we're doing miles per minute, right? So this, all of this is your miles. And I'm going to scoot this down because then we know in one minute. So it's miles per minute, and that goes down here. So we're trying to get to 60. So we want 60 minutes down here. Okay, so we're looking for 60 minutes because we just agreed that 60 minutes equals an hour. So I'm going to leave this up to you to finish it because I told you you had to do one by yourself. Ask yourself the question. How did I get from 1 to 60? What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Once you know what that answer is, that tells you 60 minutes. And boys and girls, is 60 minutes the same as one hour? The answer is yes. So you have found what is the turtle speed in miles per hour. Okay? So I'm going to let you go ahead and finish that up. And then I will see you all tomorrow. Um, really quick. Sorry, I forgot this part. Today, we will focus on finding unit rates from fractions. We did that our whole page. How do you find the unit rate when the x value and the y value are both fractions? You remember to find a common denominator, and then you find the amount per one. Okay? All right. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.